Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Building on WordPress. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's video, we are going to take a look at how to customize the WooCommerce checkout page. There's a lot of great tools for doing this out there, but really a lot of them add a lot of bloat, are super expensive, or really just are completely unnecessary. There is a lot that can be done with just a little bit of custom CSS. And even if you don't know how to write that CSS, I'm gonna provide you with everything that you need down in the comments or the description below so that you guys can easily follow along or just copy paste what I have down there and just tweak as necessary. Um, this is going to be super easy, but I'm going to take you through step by step what some of the CSS is doing, but I promise we will move quickly. So here you can see what a default WooCommerce checkout screen looks like. It's just a bunch of form fields that are varying in size and uh, in my opinion just isn't the best for either visuals or conversion, right? So you have all your billing details up top here, but you're hiding all of your order summary information and most importantly, your place order call to action here. So all of that is getting buried below the fold on this page and takes a couple of scrolls to get down to. You'll notice if you visited a lot of modern e-commerce websites, they do a side-by-side -side so that you always have your order summary here on the right-hand side. And I'm gonna show you how we can achieve that pretty easily. Something like this. Now, this is no plugins. Uh, this is no overriding uh, your template files or anything like that. This is just some custom CSS applied to the default WooCommerce styles. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we do this. First and foremost, as you guys know, I am using the Cornerstone Builder, but what we're going to look at today can actually apply to any builder that you're using and nearly all themes, unless they are completely overriding the template files and all of that fun stuff. So the custom CSS that I'm going to add in the builder here, just so that you guys can follow along, and this is how I do it. You guys, if you're not using Cornerstone, could also just jump into appearance and customize and go to additional CSS and add your styles in here as well. But like I mentioned, let's jump back into Cornerstone. So here we are, and we already have a section created, but let's go ahead and just do this from scratch. We'll go ahead and create an empty container here. And then within this container in this column, we are going to go ahead and add a raw content element. Now here in the content area, we're just gonna open bracket WooCommerce underscore checkout. This is just the short code directly from WooCommerce. And then we'll just close that bracket and that will render our WooCommerce checkout form right here. And this is kind of what we're seeing on the front end currently on the website. So let's go ahead and close the nice looking one and refresh here. And there we go. So that's what we're looking at here. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and add my CSS directly here in Cornerstone just because they make it nice and easy. Now, I'm not going to bore you guys by going line by line through the CSS, but I am going to go section by section. Over the years, I've sort of compiled a design look and feel that I like. Um, this all started with an article I saw over on Business Bloomer. I'll go ahead and link that in the comments below as well, where they had a great uh, explanation of how they do things, and I kind of built upon that. So we are going to break this CSS down into various sections. The first section is the structural layout. We want this to be a side-by-side -side layout, like we saw in the example I showed. And so that's going to be this first structural layout here, which basically what this is doing is taking our billing details and moving those to the left and making them 55% uh, in width. It's taking our order review side, and I've tried to comment this out for you guys so you can easily go in and kind of see what's happening here. But this takes our order review side and also floats left so that it is no longer below the form, but is actually right here next to the form. It has a width of 43% and margin to the left of 2%, which just adds a little bit of spacing in here. And then this part down here is just a quick media query for uh, tablet. So once it does stack vertically when you're on tablet or mobile, there will be just a little bit of spacing in between the two sections. So that's all this part is doing here. So all in all, that's our structural layout. If I go ahead and save this and we take our uh, default layout here and we refresh, now we have a side-by-side -side layout. And this is looking uh, better, but not great. But now we at least have that style, right? We have order summary on the right side and billing details on the left side. But now we get into the fun stuff. So let's go ahead and space this out a little bit here. And now what I've done is I've created a uh, left side CSS, right? This is just an easy way for you guys to understand what we're targeting here. And in the left side CSS, uh, let's go ahead and do this. Go ahead and paste our left side CSS. So what we are doing in this left side CSS is we are removing the billing details headline from this section up top here. 
Um, I think people know what what these are. These are billing details. And so we just remove that headline. So, so you can see what that is. We could go ahead and do this. And that's this billing details headline right here. Now, if you want that, I totally get it. You could instead just delete the section that I have here where I have a note. And in my opinion, you would just want some margin, so you would activate this CSS right here. And now you got billing details with a little bit of space below it here. So either one of those work. Um, I prefer the display none. Then we get into the container style. So this little column here that's housing our form, what do we want that to look like? Again, these are, as always, these are opinionated styles, but maybe you want that to be gray, so you could do something like that. Um, you could put in you know, some sort of hex value. I just like that white. You could also do transparent, so it doesn't have a container, or it doesn't look like it has a container. And then, as you guys know, I really like padding. So I've added three Ms of padding surrounding this here just to make it feel more breathable. And then this border radius here has one M of rounding, which just sort of rounds out our edges there. Again, totally opinionated. If you don't like that, you could just delete it or you could customize it if you wanted five M's and wanted it really rounded for some reason. You could do that as well. Then we get into our form field title styling, and that's these here where it says first name, last name, company name, all of that. By default, if I were to delete this, you'll see it kind of looks like this here, which isn't bad uh, by any means, but I kind of like a, a crisper looking style. So we made the colors a little bit darker. Um, we customized those colors so that, you know, if you wanted those to be, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, maybe blue, you could do something like this by just very simply coming in and changing those colors. Um, so we have that set currently to 4A, 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 and that's what this looks like here. And then we've put a text transform on that and just called out the uppercase transform so that they are sort of set apart a little bit from the actual text fields themselves, just a little bit of differentiation. Um, and then we've also done some styling just to match to the uh, drop down containers here. So that's what some of these like select to container default, this section is here. And then one thing I wanted to add, you'll notice when you are on the default styles and you click on something, there's like a little bit of box shadow on here, but it's really hard to tell what you've actually focused on, right? Like clicking here versus clicking, clicking there. But what we've done is we've added this form field focus color style. Now, obviously you could change this border color to whatever you want, but if I go ahead and save this and jump back to our front end here, you'll notice that now we have our billing styles being pulled in. If I scroll down to a field here and click on it, we get this nice little purple border here that just identifies what we are focusing on, which is super nice. So we've done our layout styles to get this side by side. We've done our left side styles to get this looking how we want. Again, opinionated here. Let's go ahead and space this out a little bit and let's grab our right side styles. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy those and paste those in here. And now you'll notice what we've got. Let's jump into our right side styles here. In our right side styles, We've got our order review headline removed, just like we removed the billing details. Uh, then we have our order review container styles. Again, background white. We gave it a little bit of padding. I actually, on that padding, might match our other padding. So maybe I do three M's, something like that. So now you have three M's on this side and three M's on that side. Um, we've added a little bit of box shadow just so this feels like it's lifted off the surface, makes our place order box or our order review box here um, a little more prominent, a little more of a focal point. I personally do not like the table headlines that show up up here for like product and subtotal. So I've removed those, but obviously with any of this CSS, you could go ahead and get rid of the things you disagree with. So if you were to delete that, you'll see it says product and subtotal up top there. Again, just like we did on the left side of the form, I've I've transformed these to uppercase and I gave them a font size. You could specify different font sizes as you see fit. Um, and then also, I don't like the divider lines that are in a lot of themes by default. So that would look like this here where you have these lines. Um, so I've just gotten rid of those completely. And that's what this section is right here. And again, you can work through each of these items as you see fit. We also added a little bit of Stripe form field styles because Stripe is one of the most popularly used payment gateways, especially with WooCommerce. If you are using something else like PayPal or WooCommerce payments or something, there might be some additional styling that you need to do if you wanted to match um, your checkout with what we're doing here. And then the other thing, I just like your place order button to be nice and prominent. So I've done 100% width on this here, which you can actually see 100% width. And then I've added custom styles here. Obviously, you guys can change those to match the color of your or, uh, design.
So to summarize where we're at right now, we've added our layout CSS to get this side by side. We've styled the left side here, which is our form container and the form fields themselves. And now we're working on this right side. So now if I were to refresh, you'll notice that where it says your order has disappeared and now we've just got everything sort of laid out nicely here. But depending on how long your form is over here on the left hand side, you now might lose some of the focus on your place order box here. And so what I've done is is I've added in just this little bit of sticky on the order review ID here. And so if we go ahead and save, and this is without adding any other custom functions, and I go ahead and refresh the page, now you'll notice as I scroll down, that right side with our order review details stays sticky in screen for us. So it actually scrolls with us as we scroll, which is kind of nice. Now, some of the things we wanna style are the coupon alert up here. And again, if you like how this looks, you could just stop there, but I've added some styles just to kind of match this with some of the look and feel of what we're doing. So if we were to jump back over here and we were to grab our alerts and coupon styles, CSS, let's go ahead and space this down. So you'll notice we have our coupon and alert styles here. And we just have a couple of things that we're doing. Um, first and foremost, we've just given it sort of a neutral background color. Um, a lot of times my clients don't want to draw attention to the fact that there's a coupon code because you might interrupt a conversion, but then you also want people to be able to find it. So I've done some, again, opinionated styles where the background color is kind of a neutral gray. Um, and then we have kind of a darker gray text color here with no border on it. So that gives us some styling here. Then we also created a container again, cause I just think this looks nice and it kind of matches the style we're going for here. We created a container on the dropdown. So now our coupon is housed inside this white box with a little bit of padding kind of matches everything else. And that white box has a border radius on it here too. So what we'll see when we jump back over to the front end is instead of this, where the coupon field is just kind of floating in space, we refresh this. And now we have a coupon field that is anchored inside of a nice container that matches everything else. One of the problems though, and I'm gonna delete this here, is that if you were to just stop there and we were to refresh, and we type in a coupon code that doesn't work or there's some other error on the page, you get this kind of ugly uh, default WooCommerce error message. And again, you could leave that, but I've added in this little bit of CSS here for our error alert styles, which just basically gives it a nice soft style. So if we were to go ahead and refresh this again, come into our coupon and type in a coupon that doesn't exist. Now we get something that's just a little more modern, a little more bold. And again, you could play around with some of those colors as you see fit. The next thing we're gonna do here is if we scroll down to the bottom, 90% of the time these order notes or additional details really are not necessary. And to me, they are just conversion interrupter fields. Um, so you obviously can leave them, but I've also included a style here in our style sheet where we can go ahead and just add in uh, this remove additional information fields, which just puts a display none on those fields. And you notice they disappeared there. And if we were to jump back over to the front end, and refresh the page, they are now gone here as well. So now really that's all you need if you're just using a standard setup of WooCommerce. If you also are using WooCommerce subscriptions, I've got some just uh, opinionated styles here. So optional WooCommerce subscription styles, you would enable these. So you'd take the commenting off on them here. You could enable these to just help style some of your order review sections here. I think when WooCommerce subscriptions is active, it's really confusing as to what the price is because you end up with like two subtotals and two totals and one of them is a recurring total. And so I just styled those slightly. Obviously, you guys can adjust or change those as needed. Um, this might look like a lot of CSS here, but because we've broken it down into sections, it should be really easy for you guys to be able to find and play around with or change some of the opinionated preferences that I have in here. So what we've done is we've taken the standard default WooCommerce form, which looks like this, which again, in my opinion, not pretty and definitely can affect conversions. And we've updated that with this CSS to something that in my opinion is far more functional, a lot more modern looking, and actually helps drive or increase your conversion rate because it keeps the place order box directly in front of you at all times. So hopefully that helps you guys on your next WooCommerce build. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful. If you you found this video useful please give it a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video peace